Hey guys, Carl Schuch here from snorkel.tv and today we're going to continue our previous discussion on an infinite scroller. Uh, and last time we talked we made a scroller that was able to scroll any number of items and we talked specifically about this lob off technique where once an item got beyond the mask it was lobbed off and brought back to the beginning. Now in our first example we were only lobbing off one item at a time. Here I'm lobbing off two items at a time and without changing any code I can make it so that this mask here dictates how many items are moving and how many items are being lob lobbed off. So let's just change the width here to be 44 times 4. All right. Each icon is 44 pixels wide, that's where that number came from. And you'll see now that by just changing the mask and some positioning here, without touching the code, four items are scrolling at a time, and it's a constant, infinite loop. And you'll see that when we do the toggle mask, that the four items that go beyond the mask get lobbed off and back, brought back to the beginning. Okay, and we talked about this lob off routine in detail last time. Um, but I wasn't totally thrilled with the fact that um, we had some funny numbers in our code. And uh, you'll see here we started by just lobbing off one item and bringing it back to the beginning. And in our reset function, what we were doing was we were going through the parent MC. We were offsetting all of the movie clips by the distance that the parent had moved. It's very important to note that this 100 here is the same as this 100 here and they also both happen to be the width of one clip. So we're saying move everything over the width of one sub movie clip here. And then we're saying, hey, look for the rightmost clip. Here we're only lobbing off one clip, so we're checking to see if it has an X equal to 400. Now what does that 400 mean? That 400 is actually the width of the parent container. 100 times four gives us 400. So these numbers and their relationships are very important. So what I want to do is explore those relationships and show you how our code can be really brought up to uh, speed here. Um, at any time, um, well, let's just do this. Here, I want to show you that we're setting a distance to scroll variable. And that's now based on the width of the mask. So that allows me to change the width of the mask and then change how much it's being scrolled. So you'll see here distance to scroll is being used in the tween that moves that parent container around. And when I'm doing my reset command, you'll see that we're going through every movie clip in the parent and instead of updating it, moving it over 100 pixels or the width of an icon, we're saying update each X value equal to the distance to scroll. So it's the same value that we had scrolled, which is based on the width of that mask, all right? And then also, while we're, after we move everything over based on the width of the mask, we are gonna lob off everything that doesn't belong at the end and bring it back to the beginning. So let's start off by showing you um, how this distance to scroll number actually works, okay? So, right now, the mask has a width of 176, okay? The parent has a width of 352. So what we're gonna do is show you how we can lob off these last four, okay? So here in our code, we're saying we want this thing to move based on the width of the mask. So if I take this container and I say, you know what, let's add 176 to your Y, notice now that we're ready to lob off these last four. That's what the first tween does. It moves the parent over based on the width of the mask. Now, I want to lob off the last four clips. But before I do that, what we do is we go into the parent and we're going to take all of these clips, notice that the width here is 352, and we're going to add to their x value the amount, the distance to scroll amount, which is 176. So that puts them all over there. All right, remember we do this sort of temporary offset. Now, when we figure out which clips we want to lob off, it's going to be this one, this one, this one, and this one. Well, how do I know? Well, let's take a look. 
in my code, let's just show you what we have going on here. We're asking after we've moved every item over to the right based on the distance to scroll, we're saying, hey, if your x value is greater than last item x, last item x, what's that? That is the width of the parent, okay? Then we're going to subtract the width of the parent. All right, the width of the parent is 352. Let's go back in here. What is your x value? So as we're doing that loop now, we're going to find the x value is 352. Whoops. All right, you get lobbed off. We're going to subtract 352. Boom, puts you back to the beginning. I'm going to take Flash Builder. Oh, what's your x value? 396. That's greater than 352. So let's subtract 352. There you go. Notice what's happening. Let's select Adobe Illustrator. Oh, look, your x value is greater than 352. So let's subtract 352. And this is all going to be happening instantaneously. Take Lightroom. We're going to take your x and we're going to subtract 352. Goes back to the beginning. Then we go back to scene one. Take this guy and we instantly say, oh, let's uh, take your x value and subtract 176, and then everything gets set up. So we took the last four icons that were hanging over, and we moved them back. And that process is going to happen over and over and over and over again. So let's test it out. There it goes. Take the last four and move them back. Now what's flexible about this is, again, I can use the width of the mask to determine how far these movie clips move, or I can say, hey, you know what? I know each clip is 44 pixels wide. Let's just go into the code right now and say the distance to scroll is going to be 88. Okay. So here we still have a mask that shows four items at a time, but now we're only moving two of them out and lobbing off two and bringing them back to the beginning. I didn't touch any code except for to say, oh, let's change the amount of how many scroll. Well, let's do this. Instead of doing 88, let's do uh, 44 times 3. All right, so now three icons are going to be lobbed off and brought back to the beginning. All right, guys, if I talk more, I think I'm just going to confuse things. It's really cool once you uh, get the whole concept of the lob off. So rewatch that part if you need to watch it again. Um, but the relationships between how far you're scrolling, how far everything's being offset, and the distance um, that we're lobbing everything back and how it's related to the width of this clip, uh, it's all very important stuff. All right, so check out the source files, play with some numbers, have some fun with it. Uh, but, but this scroller is going to be really flexible when you want to just infinitely scroll lots and lots of things over and over again. All right, guys, I got like eight new things to be talking about soon. So uh, keep watching, keep in touch, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.